Invasive species and cancer are two seemingly separate issues. However, their development is very similar to one another. They both invade, grow and spread to large numbers if unchecked. When a species is transported from its well-established community to a new environment, it is now considered an invasive species. The species may not survive in the new environment, but if it does, it will enter into what researchers call a lag period. This period may take several years to several decades, and during this time, the species is adjusting and growing its numbers. This will all eventually lead to an ecological impact that will have consequences for all the species living in that ecosystem, including humans. Let's take the example of the giant African snail, also known as Lisa Catina fulica, that can grow 6 to 8 inches. Florida has already had two separate invasions of the species, once in 1966 and again in 2011. The first one started when a child decided to bring back three of these snails from a vacation. His grandparents eventually decided to let these three snails go into their backyard. In only seven years, these three snails grew to over 18,000, largely because each of these snails can lay 1,000 to 1,200 eggs per year and have a lifespan of nine years and they have no natural enemies. These snails are prolific eaters and can adapt and invade the habitats of many species including humans agricultural lands. They will eat calcium rich building materials off houses to build their own shells. When they digest rat feces, their mucus may contain rat lungworm, which can cause meningitis in humans. To fight with this invasion, dogs have been trained to sniff out the invasive snails and state officials gathered and tracked them. The public was warned to report any sighting of these snails. As you can imagine, the costs of controlling these snails is astronomical. The US has already spent millions and millions of dollars to keep these invaders under control. And you might be wondering, how in the world are these invasive species related to anything like cancer? Just like the snail becoming tens of thousands of numbers from a population that only had a few individuals, cancer growth in the body will occur in a primary site with a handful of cells and then as it progresses it will spread to nearby tissues, organs, and lymph nodes through the blood or lymphatic system, just like the snails multiplying and spreading into their new locations. Moreover, similar to invasive species, cancer also often has a lag period. Most individuals when exposed to a causative agent will not develop clinical symptoms for several years to decades. In fact, after the collapse of the World Trade Center, many individuals who were there that day were exposed to cancer-causing agents. For example, a type of asbestos was an agent released into the air and is associated with the development of mesothelioma. Individuals present that day and later developed this type of cancer could receive governmental assistance only if a minimum of 11 years had passed since the collapse of the World Trade Center. So what does the similarity between cancer and invasive species give us? It helps guide research. It might seem weird to study an invasive snail and how it reproduces and spreads. This type of research is based on curiosity of understanding how nature works and often can help solve human problems like cancer. When we look at these interesting patterns in nature, we can better understand how patterns in our own bodies work. So a very specific looking case of a giant snail invasion can potentially lead to a better understanding of cancer. In fact, in 2018, researchers have discovered that a recently evolved species of asexual crayfish has been invading vast regions of Europe and Africa. This animal can almost clone itself through a process known as parthenogenesis and it does not need males to reproduce. The species was thought to have created an aquarium in Germany in 1995 but was released to nature and since then it has exploded in numbers. In their paper, the researchers claim that understanding the genome, spread and evolution of these species could potentially be a model system for clonal genome evolution of cancer. So looking at crazy phenomena in nature could really help us solve the mysteries of our own bodies. That's all for today. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you'd like to help us in our YouTube adventure, please consider joining our 700 supporters on Patreon. Until next time.
Thank you.